here we've taken our galaxy fabric and I have the fabric face down and this is my pattern piece from my traveler's notebook cover pattern this is the main body piece and I am going to dig out some white tailor's chalk which is a white flat um, mine is no longer square because I used it all up but usually square piece of um, there you go waxy chalk like substance it's kind of more waxy though and I'm drawing my pattern piece out on the fabric and then cutting it out I do end up making three of these traveler's notebook covers out of this fabric so I cut three of these big pieces out of our hand-painted galaxy galaxy fabric I decided to use plain black fabric for the inside of the notebook cover. I really didn't want to waste the Galaxy fabric. It was so fun to make, but I didn't want to waste it all by doing it on the inside too. I really just wanted it on the outside. Um, so I went out and got more of the black denim. But in the meantime, I um, cut, decided to cut two more of them out. And, you know, believe me, I love this fabric so much. I saved every little small piece um, that was even slightly usable to use on other projects. So here I am lining it up and cutting it out. And now we have the black piece of um, unpainted denim. And I'm going to cut out another piece for the back uh, of, or I should say, the inside of each one of the covers. And then I'm going to also cut out some pieces for the pockets. And the assembly for this is the same as the canvas notebook cover. I'll link the description for that in the uh, description. Uh, I'll link the video for that in the description below. And um, that has more detailed, complete instructions in it. You're going to need fabric for the outside, fabric for the inside, and you're going to need some stiffener to do this with. And then matching thread. I did black thread because I didn't want the thread or the stitching to show. I don't know why my head's always in the way. I'm a big giant head. Um, so anyway, um, and this is just black denim, um, which is inexpensive, easy to find normally. Um, so, and it works just great. Um, now the white tailor's chalk does come off. You can wash it off. Um, but I would say that you should probably just, um, mark your fabric on the pieces, um, um on the back for the pieces that when you're doing this. And so have the have the chalk marks be to the inside of your finished piece so that they don't show and you don't have to worry about washing anything. These are scissors that are specifically for fabric. They don't get used on anything else. I've had them for a very long time, uh, almost 40 years, which is unbelievable. Um, and uh, yeah, so anyway, don't use your paper scissors on fabric. You're just going to get frustrated. They don't have to be fancy scissors. They can be cheap ones. So make sure you cut out pieces there of the stiffener that you showed, saw me uh, cutting really quick. So you're gonna need your fabric pieces and your stiffener pieces. Now here I'm plugging my machine in because it's not out all the time. It's already got black thread in it and it's already got a denim needle in it. So I'm gonna follow the assembly procedures that we did before uh, uh, that are in the other video. And I'm going to ass start assembling my notebook covers. In this case, because I'm making three of them at once, I'm gonna sort of chain sew them. What does that mean? So I'm going to, for instance, do all of the interior pockets and I'm going to do them all at once without, instead of doing one pocket and then cutting the fabric apart and then doing another pot, uh, cutting the threads off and then doing another po uh, pocket and then cutting the threads off, I'm going to do all the pockets. So right here, I'm doing the pocket tops. So I'm going to do all the pocket tops at the end. I'm going to stop. I'm going to put another pocket under there do that one another one in there, do that one, and I'm going to do them in a chain. So when I'm done, they're all going to be connected by threads that I then can cut off, and I have all my pocket tops done. And I'm going to assemble the whole notebook cover that way, and that's a, that's a trick to doing things when you're doing multiples of the same thing. Um, that's a little assembly trick that will allow you to save a little bit of time. There's no point in stopping in between, in between each little piece and cutting threads when I have to do so many of them. And this notebook has pockets on the inside of the cover on the front and back. Just like the canvas one, it's made the exact same way. I don't hem anything, I'm just sewing along the edge to prevent the fabric from unraveling too much. I do like the ravels in the frayed edge, um, but I don't want it to unravel completely, so we are doing a, a line of stay stitching 
um, so that it will keep things intact. And there we go, there's the last piece. And then when I take it off, then I've got this huge chain of pockets and then I just cut them apart and put them all together. They're not all exactly the same. They're handmade, they're hand cut. The pockets in the inside are cut out of scraps. So each notebook is a little bit different than the other. Um, I do make sure that I have sewing labels with my, my name on them from my days when I did much more sewing. And so I make sure to put a label, there we go, on the inside of one of these smaller pockets, one for each notebook. I am keeping one of the Galaxy notebooks and the other two will be either up for sale in the Etsy shop or gifted. I'm not exactly sure yet. Mostly because I don't know how much to charge. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I don't know if I, by the time this video airs, I'll have to let you know in the description below what I've decided. So and these labels are pre-made by a company that does, you know, custom embroidery. And then I just can put them on there and sew all the way around the edges making sure the needle's down in each corner, lifting the presser foot up, turning it around, and then when I'm done, clipping all the threads. And I've got all my labels. So here I'm assembling my pockets and I should say I've assembled my pockets and I'm attaching them to the inside of the notebook covers, again, refer to the, I refer back to the complete directions in the other uh, video. And here we are, we've got all the pockets on the inside and the front and the back. And so the insides are done. So I'm gonna do all the different insides and then I'm going to sandwich them with the outsides, wrong sides together with the stiffener in between. And you'll see me um, doing that, part, that process in just a second. I do sew all the way around the edges of this inside piece when the po when I'm attaching the pockets. It's, it's just because it's easier, to be honest with you. I don't pin anything. That doesn't mean you shouldn't, especially as a new sewer. You should definitely use pins more than I do, um, but you don't want to sew over the pins. So make sure as you're sewing that you stop, pull the pin out before you sew over it. Um, they can break, hit the needle, and something can break, and it can pop and hit you in the eye. Guess how I know that? <laughs> um, And I'm not chain sewing these because it's a little bit too difficult now that the piece is so big, but I am doing all of the insides and then putting everything together and sewing all of the outsides together at the same time. I'm not stopping to complete one whole notebook cover and then um, doing the next one. I'm li just lining the fabric pieces up with my fingers and then sewing them down. Now I don't show you on camera that I did um, have a little trouble with some of my seams being crooked during the final assembly process where I was attaching the insides to the outsides and I did do a little bit of seam ripping. Um, and I only don't show you that just because I didn't want the video to be long. There's nothing wrong with making a mistake and having to rip a seam out. Um, don't feel uh, upset about that if that happens to you. It happens to every seamstress all the time. So. That being said, when you get your sewing supplies, make sure you get a seam ripper. It's a special little tool with a hook on it. And uh, yeah, you're gonna definitely need one of those. So here I am assembling all my pieces. You can see the galaxy painting on the outside, the stiffener in between, and then the inside fabric with the pockets facing out. I'm pinning the corners to keep all my layers together. And then I'm gonna sew all the way around the edge, making sure not to sew over the pins and to take the pins out as I'm going. I'm going to pin all three covers together and then sew all three covers. Here, right about here, I dropped the camera. <laughs> so I actually cut that part out because, yeah, it was not good. The camera actually went over and hit the floor. <laughs> it was just not bad, but I wanted to show you how I was assembling everything there so that you can see the, the galaxy fabric there on the outside and the pockets on the outside. So here it's sewn and I'm using my applique scissors, but you could do this with any scissors, to push the inner, inner and outer fabric back and cut off the excess stiffener, interfacing stiffener. Um, cut off that extra bit. There's about a quarter of an inch or so extra. 
cut it, go all the way around and cut that extra off, being careful to pull the uh, inner and outer fabric back and not cut the fabric to just cut that white stuff. Don't rush, don't be in a hurry. Remember this is sped up at least two times, but you do want to pull the fabric back and cut that off. Um, I also now here am trimming, uh, pulling off and cutting extra loose bits that are starting to pop off the thread, fabric starting to fray, which is fine. And then I'm going to go and actually do it a second row of stitching, a quarter an inch out from the first one, all the way around the outer edge to encase that white stiffener um, in the black fabric. So what was happening because the fabric is black and the stiffener is white and it doesn't come in any other color. Um, it was showing and I didn't like that. So I added a second row of stitching all the way around so that it would be closed up in a fabric seam after I gave it a little trim and now it's not going to show. I think I show you on camera a close up really quick here of what that looks like after I get all the threads trimmed. Maybe. I'm, I'm trimming where the inside fabric is, you know, they're not exactly square. Things aren't square. So I'm giving a little haircut <laughs> so that it's a little more square. There you can kind of see if you look at, at the top of the cover near the machine, there you got a quick uh, view of the two rows of stitching. Um, and um, the second row was a quarter an inch away from the first row towards that frayed edge and so it closed in there we go there is a good close-up view so you can't see that whiteness anymore so I do that to all three pieces so that that white stiffener doesn't show anymore you could of course um, assemble these a different way if you're more experienced seamstress you would understand that and you could sew that cover as a pocket uh, cut that stiffener piece down so it fits in the pocket, slide it in between the two pieces of fabric, and then sew the top shut. Um, but that is um, an extra step as a beginner you don't necessarily need to take. And I'm the lazy crafter, remember? I'm not the frugal crafter. That's Lindsay. <laughs> Lindsay Wyrick. I'm the lazy crafter. So, uh, yeah, I didn't want to have to do that. And here I'm actually doing some seam ripping. Um, because something is not quite the way I want it to be. So I'm actually, that blue thing in my hand is a seam ripper. Um, so, you know, don't be afraid of getting out your seam ripper if things aren't exactly right. Uh, although we're mixed media artists and we tend to like things a little messy, you know, that only goes so far for me. So <laughs> here I'm fixing, I'm fixing my mistake and then I'm going to trim the threads, retrim the stiffener, and then I'm going to continue. And I do fix all of my covers this way until they're right and proper the way I want them to be. Now we are going to fold them in half here and then mark that center seam with a pin on either end. I didn't want to mark it with the white tailor shot because I didn't want to have to wipe it off. <laughs> um, and then I use a ruler to mark where I want my holes for my eyelets to go. Uh, and I use the tailor's chalk. Um, the tailor's chalk is going to be right in the center of where the eyelet's going to go and I'm going to punch a hole there. So that's going to get rid of the tailor's chalk. So I'm not worried about that. And then one on each, an inch from each end, and then one in between those two other marks. Do sit, take some time and mark properly where your holes are supposed to go. Um, when I did the demo on the original video, which is in the description below, um, I actually on that one in the video, I got my holes off. One of the one of the holes was crooked, so um, take some time to mark it so that they're right and proper and straight, so that when you punch your holes. Um, you get the eyelets in the right place. And you can add or omit that center hole if you want. It's supposed to be traveler's no notebook style. Don't punch, by the way, through the pins. Make sure you move the pin out of the way or you take it out completely. Um, but that center hole is supposed to be for an elastic or ribbon band to hold your journal closed. You can use that one or eliminate it as you see fit. Um, these are large eyelets. That's the size, large, just as large eyelets by Dritz. They come with that little setting tool, two-piece setting tool you see uh, to the left of the screen above the eyelets. Um, the black piece is the base and the silver piece is the part that you put on top. And then you give it a good whack with the hammer 
The eyelet package has really good directions on it. Make sure you don't have your fingers in the way. Um, this is not a part of the project that should be done with small children because you don't want them to hurt yourselves, themselves um, or be tempted to whack their brother or sister in the head with a hammer. Just, you know, <laughs> you never know what kids can do. All right, so that's it. That's the way you make a traveler's notebook cover out of galaxy fabric. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you give it a try. Don't forget to go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. There you go, all three of them. I'll see you later.